listening to Coffee and Conversation with Recovery Advocate Network, the nonprofit organization that strives to address the staggering disparity in resource availability for individuals suffering from mental health disorders, processing disorders, addictions, trauma healing, and sexual identity challenges. Together, we strive to end the stigma associated with these challenges so that true healing can begin. Welcome back to Coffee and Conversations Between the Lines blog club series. This is episode number 36, where actor Link Hand will read Joshua Young's blog post entitled Vulnerability, Overcoming Abuse, and Opening Dialogues of Empowerment. Born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama, Link Hand has been appearing in commercials, television programs, and feature films since he was six years old. After moving to Los Angeles, Link began to explore his love of acting further by studying with legendary coach Howard Fine. A lifelong athlete, Link's love of sports was nurtured by his father at a young age. Link excelled at football, basketball, and martial arts, but it would be baseball that ultimately brought Link's passions together. Link's natural athleticism made him a perfect fit to play Fritz, one of Jackie Robinson's primary antagonists in the 2013 hit feature 42. Now, he's reoccurring on the hit show, NCIS Hawaii, playing the role of Charlie. As a reminder, the views expressed in any blog are the views of the author, and the purpose is to provide a safe place for the author's voice to be heard. So, what are we waiting for? Fill up your coffee, sit back, and let's get started. In the silent corridors of my past, vulnerability became an unwitting accomplice, a cloak I wore involuntarily woven from the threads of sexual abuse that I endured for 16 months at the young age of 13. The scars, although mostly invisible, marked me as an easy target, a canvas upon which the pain of my history painted the indelible strokes. To be vulnerable was to be exposed, a prey with an invisible target painted on the canvas of my being. The memories of abuse echoed through the chambers of my mind, imprinting a visceral fear that clung to every fiber of my vulnerability. Each open wound, each tender emotion laid bare, felt like an invitation for further exploitation. A cruel dance with an unrelenting past. In the landscape of my emotions, vulnerability unfurled as a paradox. The yearning for connection, for understanding, was contradicted against an instinctual urge to shield myself from potential harm. I navigated this delicate dance, a tightrope stretched between the desire of intimacy and the fear of betrayal. Trust, once shattered, became a fragile construct held together by the thinnest of threads. The emotions that accompanied vulnerability were a turbulent sea. Waves of fear crashing against the shores of shame, leaving behind the wreckage of self-worth. I grappled with powerlessness, the remnants of sexual abuse, whispering insidious doubts about my ability to protect myself from the predators that lurked in the shadows. Yet within the crucible of my struggle, a quiet resilience took root. It was a whisper of defiance, an acknowledgement that vulnerability was not synonymous with weakness. The journey toward overcoming the weight of my own vulnerability began with a courageous gaze into the abyss of my past, an exploration of the scars that defined me. Therapy became my safe haven, a sanctuary where vulnerability was not a liability but a tool for healing. In the presence of a compassionate guide, I began to dismantle the armor that had been my shield. The therapist's office became a crucible 
for my transformation where vulnerability was met with empathy and the process of healing unfolded at its own rhythm. Overcoming the shackles of vulnerability required a journey inward, a pilgrimage into the recesses of my own psyche. I unearthed the strength to rewrite the narrative, turning each revelation into a triumph, a declaration of resilience over my victimhood. The eternal scars of my past, once symbols of shame, became badges of courage, testaments to the battles fought and the victories won. Community played a pivotal role in my evolution. Opening up to trusted friends and loved ones became a bridge between isolation and connection. It was a risk, a leap of faith, but in those moments of shared vulnerability, I discovered the transformative power of human connection. The echoes of my past, once hauntingly isolating, now found resonance in the collective understanding of those who had walked similar paths. The responsibility to protect others from the insidious clutches of sexual abuse became a guiding force. I recognized the importance of opening dialogues, of breaking the silence that shrouds vulnerability and darkness. Education became a weapon, a means to empower others with the knowledge and awareness to recognize the signs and prevent the perpetuation of cycles of abuse. I engaged in conversations that mattered, gently probing the boundaries of discomfort and inviting others to share their stories. Through vulnerability, connection, and empathy, I sought to create spaces where survivors could find solace and strength. The dialogue extended beyond personal experiences to societal conversations about dismantling the structures that enable abuse to perpetrate silence. The eternal scars of my vulnerability became not only a map of my own journey, but also a guide for others. In sharing my story, I hoped to inspire resilience, to ignite a flame of courage in those who felt trapped in the shadows of their past. Together, we became a collective voice, a force that could challenge the status quo and dismantle the walls of silence. As I stand on the steep cliff of my own narrative, Vulnerability is no longer a source of fear, but a superpower, a force that allowed me to reclaim my agency, rewrite my story, and extend a hand to others navigating the storm. The dialogue once confined to whispers in the dark now reverberates in the open, a symphony shared experiences that resonates with the possibility of healing and transformation. You just listened to episode number 36, Vulnerability, Overcoming Abuse, and Opening Dialogues of Empowerment, written by Joshua and read by actor Link Hand. We hope you've been encouraged and learned something new from today's story. Look for additional Between the Lines episodes coming soon. As a reminder, the views expressed in any blog are the author's views, and the purpose is to provide a safe, educational place for the author's voice to be heard. If you want to share your experiences or expertise, we encourage you to be a future guest by emailing us at podcast at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org or submit a blog post by emailing blog at recoveryadvocatenetwork.org. We also encourage you to comment on the episode so that we can continue to provide content that is most beneficial to the community. We are proud that every individual working with RAN does so on a 100% volunteer basis. You can support the mission by clicking the love, not like icon on our podcast and subscribing. We hope you will also connect with us at www.recoveryadvocatenetwork.org where you can donate to the mission, read blog posts, and stay in the loop about upcoming events. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Recovery Advocate Network and on Twitter or X at Rand Wellness. So listeners, now's the time to pause what you're doing. Make sure you subscribe on whatever your favorite platform is. Follow us. Please give us that five-star rating. Add some comments. And then most importantly, share these episodes with your friends. You never know whose hearts you will touch. 
If this episode was triggering to you, we encourage you to contact your support system, therapist, national and community support groups, the Global Crisis Text Line by texting 741-741 and or if in the United States, dialing 988 to reach the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. If you're in the U.S. and need additional resources such as shelter, support group resources, transportation, food, or a safe, confidential path out of physical or emotional domestic abuse, call 211 or visit www.211info.org for assistance. Now, once again, we know you're super busy. We're grateful you said yes to spending some time with us today to listen to this blog post. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope to see you in the next time. So sit back, relax, and get back to your coffee.